Right from the beginning, let me be straight with you and say that I have never owned any high-vis gear. There are things I do to make myself more conspicuous while riding, and we will talk about those in a bit. But like most motorcyclists, I have not gone high-vis because of the way it looks. It is just not very attractive, and that is the primary reason the vast majority of riders do not use it. Now, with that said, I know that the looks of it aren't the best reason for not using it, and I'm always open to learning new things. So I decided to give hi -Viz a second look and do a little research in an attempt to find out if there is any hard evidence that wearing day glow yellow, orange, or pink actually makes a difference in reducing motorcycle accidents. Before we get started, I want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to be notified when new videos come out. If you like the content of this video, well, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like to learn about things like travel planning, packing, and making your own videos, well, then please consider joining the Travelers Club where you can hang out with a bunch of cool dudes and dudettes during our monthly Travelers Club Zoom meeting. Of course, if you do a Google search, you will find all kinds of claims about the benefits of brightly colored clothing, such as this statement. High visibility motorcycle gear makes riders more conspicuous on the road. Motorcyclists who wear high visibility clothing and personal protective equipment are approximately 37% less likely to be involved in a motorcycle crash. Now, of course, this sounds great. We should all run out and buy high-vis gear based upon 37% less likelihood of getting involved in a crash. But unfortunately, the vast majority of places that use this statistic offer nothing to back up the claim, and only a few provide a link to the study from which it was derived. So I decided to look into it a little deeper, and I found the paper from which most people out there make this quote. It was done in 2004 and it was called Motorcycle Rider Conspicuity and Crash-Related Injury, a Case Control Study. The research was performed in and around Auckland, New Zealand during the time period of 1993 to 1996, so the study is literally 30 years old now. The research looked at more than 463 motorcycle crashes in which there was injury leading to hospitalization and or death. Along with these 463 crashes, they had a control group composed of 1,233 riders recruited randomly at roadside locations. They asked all of these riders about their use of reflective or fluorescent equipment as well as their use of daytime running lights. Now, of course, I have my questions about the validity of this methodology, and some of the things were even brought up in the discussion within the paper itself. For example, if it's true that high-vis clothing is underrepresented in that group of 463 crashes, is it because of the clothing color, or is it because people who gravitate towards wearing high-vis are just more safety-conscious riders in the first place? But regardless of my questions about the methodology, there was some interesting findings and, quite honestly, some confusing ones. So the first finding, the use of reflective or fluorescent clothing. They found that nearly 20% of control riders were wearing some type of reflective or fluorescent clothing. Drivers wearing reflective or fluorescent clothing had a 37% lower risk of crash-related injury than those who were not wearing such materials. As I mentioned earlier, these findings are often repeated in articles across the internet, but the other findings in this same study are most always left out. It is also true that they lumped high-vis and reflective clothing together into one big pot. For example, the jacket that you see me wearing in this shot is obviously not high-vis, it's black. However, it does have reflective areas built into it. So where does this jacket fit into the study? The second thing that this study looked at was helmet color. 
They found that the main colors of helmets reported by controlled drivers were black, approximately 39.8%, white at 30.6%, and red at 13.8%. Compared with wearing a black helmet, use of a white helmet was associated with a 24% lower risk of crash. The study went on to say, we found similar associations for red and a combined group of yellow and orange helmets, although these did not achieve standard levels of statistical significance. Self-nominated descriptions of light-colored helmets compared with that of dark was associated with a 19% lower risk. So here the study does mention yellow and orange helmets as compared to white and darker colors. Are these yellow and orange colors high-vis? Well, since the study is about high-vis gear, I assume they are, but I really can't tell from the way that this is reported. What I do find interesting is that white helmets perform just as well as yellow and orange. The next finding of the study had to do with daytime headlight operation. And they found that there was a 27% lower risk of crash if you had your headlight on during the day. Now, of course, this makes a lot of sense. And here in the US, well, daytime headlight use has been mandatory for decades. In addition to using your headlight, adding additional driving lights can also be a valuable tool for making your bike more visible. The last finding of this study, well, it has to do with frontal color of your clothing and the motorcycle. That is, what does it look like to a car as you're coming towards it? And this is where things, well, they get a little confusing. The study found that 80% of the control drivers wore either black, blue, or brown clothing on their upper body and black or blue clothing on the lower body. Of the main frontal motorcycle colors, 24% of the motorcycles were black, 23% red, 15% white, another 15% were chrome or silver, and 12% were blue. Similarly, no difference in risk occurred for self-nominated light versus dark colored clothing or motorcycle. So at this point, are you as confused as I am? The study stated in their main findings that high-vis and reflective gear reduces your risk of crash, but now they are saying that frontal color of the motorcycle and the rider's choice of clothing makes no difference. Are they only talking about colors other than high-vis? Well, it certainly does not state that, and it makes no comparison between the more common colors and high-vis gear. In addition, during the helmet discussion, colors like yellow and orange are mentioned as compared to black and white helmets. So all of this leads, at least me, to the conclusion that jacket and pant color, as well as bike color, has no effect on your overall visibility in traffic conditions. So what does make a difference? Well, it seems, at least according to this study, that using a white or bright colored helmet along with daytime running lights are the things that are going to make you the most visible. A high-vis jacket, well, not so much. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, the results of this study are often cited as proof that high-vis gear can make you safer. But as we can see, it's a little more complicated than that. And this was about the only study that I found that was related directly to motorcycles. However, there have been several additional studies about high-vis clothing used for bicyclists. And they are also very interesting. In 2018, a study from the University of Bologna looked at bicycle road crashes between 2001 and 2015. The purpose of the study was to determine the impact of Italy's mandatory high-vis requirement for cyclists. And this is what they found. Results revealed that the implementation of legislation imposing high-visibility clothing for cyclists did not influence the number of bicycles involved in road crashes as well as its proportion in the total vehicles involved in road crashes. The introduction of the legislation did not produce immediate effects, nor did it have any effects over time. Another study done in the UK attempted to determine if high-vis clothing actually led to fewer crashes and fewer close passes. 
The findings were the researchers from the University of Bath and Brunel in a study that was published in 2013 found no matter what the clothing a cyclist wore, around 1-2% to of drivers will pass dangerously close when overtaking. The researchers concluded that there is very little or nothing a cyclist can do in the form of wearing clothing or adding lights that can prevent the most dangerous drivers from passing too close. Previous studies, like the Hurt Report, published in 1981, found that many motorcycle accidents were caused when a motorcyclist was not seen by an automobile driver. The conclusion was then that motorcyclists should take measures to make themselves more easily seen. Some of those measures included high-vis clothing and accessory lights. Of course, that sounds very logical, but the reality, as we can see from looking at additional studies, is that things are a bit more nuanced than just wearing a high-vis jacket. For me, these are the takeaways after reviewing the data that's available out there online. So first, wearing a high-vis jacket does little to make you more visible. Your body is largely hidden behind your bike's fairing and lighting system, your head and helmet is what drivers are going to see. Which leads us to number two. Wearing a high-vis yellow or orange helmet or a white helmet can help to make you more visible and is worth doing. Currently, I have three helmets, two of which are white, and one is a combination of red, white, and black. Number three, adding accessory lights that gives you a bigger visual footprint can also help to make you more seen. Here in the US, we all have to run with our headlights on during the day, so that's kind of a moot point. I know personally, I have fog lights on my bike and I always run with them on even during the day. Number four, if you are riding at night, having a jacket that incorporates reflective areas, well, that's just a must. Number five, no matter what you do to make yourself more visible, there is still a percentage of automobile operators that will not be paying attention or that just don't care. It is this small percentage that is the most dangerous. And finally, number six, wearing high-vis gear or having extra lights is not a panacea. You cannot rely on these passive measures alone. Ultimately, it is your experience and skill that is going to keep you safe. Now, of course, this is one of those controversial topics in motorcycling. And being 2023 and what social media is, I'm sure there are those that will disagree with me very vehemently. So go ahead, have at me down in the comments and tell me what you do to make yourself more conspicuous while riding. All right, gang, thanks for watching and continue to ride safe, my friends.